This video is sponsored by Riverside. I've previously talked about Riverside as the best way to record an interview with someone over the internet, primarily because of the way it records an original quality copy at the source, which gets synced over after the session. While it was already possible to use Riverside to host a live stream, that's gotten dramatically more powerful now after a recent round of updates. I'm making this video to walk you through some of these new features, but I'd like to point out before I begin that it's not just these new streaming-oriented features which make live streaming on Riverside unique. The unfair advantage Riverside offers when it comes to live streaming is how you lose out on none of the recording and editing features which form the core of Riverside's benefits. That means as you live stream, you get the whole thing recorded in even higher quality than the live version because it's a local recording in the original source quality and you get all your videos, audio and media playback on separate tracks. So if things don't show up exactly the way you want during the live, at least in the recorded version, you have a second chance to switch things up. And the idea is with Riverside's powerful editing features, you can afterwards come up with multiple pieces of content very quickly out of just one single live stream session. Now, I am actually broadcasting this as a demo stream using Riverside as I'm recording this piece to camera. It does have the ability to stream simultaneously to multiple platforms. Natively, it can do YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, X, Twitch, TikTok, or any custom RTMP address, as well as Riverside itself in audience mode. Now that last option, if you have someone tuning in to your stream via Riverside, you can actually allow them to request calling in and join your session as a guest. Right now for this demonstration, I'm streaming to two platforms, Riverside and Twitch. And here's the nice thing about streaming to multiple platforms with Riverside. All the comments from all the chat boxes across different platforms get combined into one omni-chat. So you manage them all from one place. See, if I send a comment in through Twitch saying hello, then I send another through Riverside saying hello also, they all appear in my studio and it clearly labels which platform the comments were sent from. So I can then click this to show the comments up on my stream to feature it, which is very useful for Q and A's. And before I actually feature the comments, I can click on this timer icon beside it to toggle between how many seconds I'd like to feature that comment on screen for. Quite similar to the lower thirds feature, which is also new. That comes under the text tab, and it basically allows you to create different drawers of text to show pop up at the bottom of your stream. You type out the text you want, and see as I'm doing this, there's a preview that shows up there. I can customize it. I can change its appearance, how big I want it to be. I can change its color the alignment of it, which side of the screen do I want it to be on, and I have its duration. Say I want this to show up only for five seconds, and I hit save and show, and it pops up. It's also possible to set this up in a way that the text will never go away, like so, until I click on the button that manually hides it. It's even possible to make the lower thirds a clickable link, like this one here, for anyone watching via Riverside to click on. This way, it's really gonna be a bonus for engagement if you're delivering any call to actions during your live stream. It's designed in a way that it's easy enough to set up and launch in the middle of a stream. And if you notice that the color options appear to be a little bit limited, that's because it follows the theme you've chosen as part of your branding. That's something you'd have control under the brand tab, and you can choose from a list of preset themes or go with custom like I have. So with custom, you would dial in your color scheme through hex codes. It's also here where you can change the appearance of your text, as well as upload your logo. So it shows up somewhere on your screen. You can pick which corner you want it to be in as you stream. Speaking of branding, Riverside is quite aware of this when you stream with them, so they do offer the option of hiding the Riverside watermark, this way the only branding that's visible on your stream is your own. You'll find that as a toggle under settings, live stream, 
and scroll down to find hide watermark. While you're here, you also have control over your streaming resolution. Riverside lets you stream up to full HD. And one more thing before I forget is that media tab. You can think of it as a soundboard, but you can also play videos as well. So you can load your audio or video clips up to 100 megabytes file size each and essentially trigger them as you require during your show. And once we are done with the stream, if, say, you want to pick some highlights from the stream and package them as bite-sized clips to share on socials, we'll pop on over to the Riverside editor, and for anyone who already knows Riverside, you would know exactly just how helpful the editor is. Before you even begin, you can generate show notes using AI to give you an overview of the entire show. And my favorite AI-powered feature is definitely Magic Clips. One click, and it gives you a few choices, such as how long you'd like your clips to be, and if there are any particular topics you're looking for, and it puts some edits together for you. If we click in to have a look at the edit, you'll find the familiar edit interface, where the entire show has been transcribed for you. And it even lets me pull off text-based edits, so I can just go ahead and trim away certain bits of text, and the video footage will get trimmed along with it. Another one of my favorites is how converting the video into different aspect ratios is just a simple drop down menu and the layout of the text or multiple video feeds are automatically adjusted to suit. That's one huge advantage of recording with Riverside because everything is on separate tracks. So not only can you isolate them in post, but it also gives you more options when it comes to layout. And you're never locked into that one layout the way it appeared during the live stream. If I go ahead and jump into an edit for the full show, you'll find those AI generated chapter markers to help me identify segments. Again, this is stuff you won't have to ask for, you'll find it's already there, along with your magic tools like enhancing the audio track with one click, or removing filler words with just one click. You also get the ability to dynamically trim gaps away at a customizable pace, again, with just one click. So when it comes to streaming, then repurposing a recording off the stream to be posted as content afterwards, it can all happen really seamlessly, all entirely within Riverside, and also quite quickly as well, thanks to those AI features. It really is a really well-designed solution to help you come up with multiple pieces of content by offloading a lot of the hard work during both the recording and editing processes. Go ahead and try Riverside out for yourself, and I'll be seeing you around. Mm -hmm.